Well, this stinks. We were supposed to be live today with the AEW Revolution predictions and preview show, but due to internet issues, God, we haven't had one of these in a while. Um, don't there's none of this. There's none of this. There's none. Of this. Uh, <laughs> syrup. The syrup internet. got caught in the cord and stuff. It just it, it just lagged everywhere. It's it, it's crazy. But guys, welcome to the AW Revolution Preview and Prediction Show right here on the All Elite Podcast, which is also right here on the No Holds Bar Network, your source for all wrestling podcast content and more. I am your host, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and I'm always joined by my co-host. She's the EVP of Giggles, the heartbreak chick. She's also the queen of the indies and possibly the exalted one because we think that maybe she's the one behind all this and why we can't go live is the exalted one. She wants everybody to join the Dark Order and to make sure you come back and watch this offline and then join the Dark Order right after. Join the Dark Order. I don't know. You guys hear that little banter that we were trying to go live. You're watching this back. We were about to go live and then just stuff was happening. I'm just going to say stuff and we're going to have to record this offline. It's happened to us before. It is what it is. Whatever. At least you're still getting us right here. So thank you for coming back and watching us live right here. We're not live right here. We're watching us back right here on YouTube.com slash the No Holds Bar Network. Make sure you are hitting that like button, dropping a comment down below. We want to hear your predictions out there. You guys got any wild and crazy predictions? Let us know down below for this Saturday's pay-per-view of Revolution, the first AEW pay-per-view of the decade. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a great one. <laughs> uh, one of the big fours we know now that they're only going to do four pay-per-views a year. Should be interesting. We had a lot of uh, good matches packed onto this card this Saturday. Yes. And it's going to be exciting. It's going to be very, very exciting. I'm pumped. Yes. I'm excited. Are you sure, Tiff? I'm excited. Sorry. <laughs> I tried to send the tweet. I'm going to send the she's, tweet out now. That, she's you know, tweeting. I'm the exalted back. one is tweeting. <laughs> As MJF Scarf put, I mean, he, he, he kind of put the math together, Tiff. I don't know. What's going on with that? I don't know. Did you see there's a Kyle... <laughs> Master's hat now? Yes. You people. I swear to God. And Tiff thought it was me. Tiff and I'm like, no, I'm at work really right now. I don't have the time to make that. I really I was like, this freaking guy over here, he goes and he freaking posts like on Twitter and he's like, It's not me. I'm it, like, it, oh it, my God. It's not me. It's not me. <laughs> I swear it's not me. I swear to you, I guys I, I can show you guys all my Twitter profiles that I own and it's not one of them. So whoever you are out there, you know, congratulations. Or if it actually is my hats, I don't know what you're doing on Twitter. Get off Twitter. Stay in my hat bin. You stay there. You keep quiet. You have a hat bin? Well, a hat drawer. A drawer. A that, drawer. If you can understand what I'm, <laughs> if, if I can get into your lingo. A drawer. <laughs> I have my hats in my drawer. The New York accent. Yes. But anyways, guys, welcome to the Ollie Podcast. Myself and Tiff keep you guys up to date with what's going on in the AEW world. And obviously this Saturday with the big pay-per-view of Revolution, we had a sweet, sweet episode of Dynamite last night. It was so good. It was good. And then we had after the um, the Road to, or the, was it the Road to, Di or Road to Revolution, or no, Countdown to Revolution, 
uh, right after, which was really, really cool. Uh, that was a must watch. I believe if it's anything like Full Gear, if you remember from Full Gear, they played that one video before the show during the pre-show. They're probably going to do that again for this one. We got excited. Yeah. Because <laughs> we we there's, so there's only one pre-show match for this one uh, or buy-in match if they're still calling it the buy-in. It's the Dark Order, coincidentally enough, facing off against SCU, so that'll be interesting. I Now that I see that, I don't think we're going to get the Exalted one just yet. I don't yeah. think he'll be announced at Revolution like I thought he would be. I think we're going to be... This is either going to be the, the, the after show, like next week or sometime soon. I don't know when. Probably the, Wednesday. Something's telling which, me. Ah, oh, Tiff. Now, it, I mean, they, they've been teasing a lot of stuff on AW's Twitter a lot. Uh, Dark Or has been teasing a lot of stuff. They've been hinting with some words, some keywords. Everything is like pointing to Matt Hardy. And it, 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 this did, this Dark Order match being in the pre-show only adds to that because Matt Hardy's contract is not over till March 1st at 3 a.m. So they, even if they, if they plan on Matt Hardy being the exalted one, he can't show up at the pay-per-view. He cannot appear on AEW television until after March 1st at 3 a.m. Right. So I think we'll get I think we're going to get the biggest tease. What I can predict here is that I think we're going to get the biggest tease out of everything we've gotten so far in that pre-show. It's going to be or something. It's going to be something completely out of the box that nobody's thinking about. Yeah, like someone tweeted and uh, Mrs. Masters picked up on it. Someone tweeted a uh, plot twist. The exalted one's actually a woman. And, mm. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Mrs. Masters, it's Rio. <laughs> Rio. It's Rio. <laughs> uh, I was dying. I was like, oh my God, I have to tweet that. I don't know. Like, I'm still kind of convinced that maybe it could be something like Kenny Omega. I've been thinking that. Um, then I was talking with somebody last night. I was like, can you imagine? Okay, it's probably not. But just think about it, right? What happens if it's really Marty Skrull? Oh, the but, cross promotion stuff because we right, already seen that with. That we were all saying Cobb. a long yeah. ago. We were like, "Oh, everybody's like, oh, Marty's coming, Marty's coming, Marty's coming!" Right now, the heat's off of him because they're like, "Oh, he signed with Ring of Honor again, so it's not happening." Right, but then we have all this stuff like this cross with like them in New Japan again, right? And then like all the teasing that we're seeing on being the elite now, Lance Archer, Jeff Cobb. Which we- we would all this. I, I mean, I don't I don't know, but it was just like a thought that I thought of like last night. I was like, how interesting would that be? Right. So all and the then, heat's off. And then right? Kenny, yeah, they announced it was it. They announced Kenny Omega is now going to he's appearing in Japan or fighting in Japan. I didn't really read too much into it. I should have. Uh, but I heard all the Japan shows were off because of the virus. So from March 1st to the 15th, I think they said that they canceled all the new Japan shows. Because of the virus that's going around. That stinks. Yeah, there's uh, something in the news like a soccer team is going to have to play in like an empty or a hockey team over there overseas is going to have to play in like an empty arena because of that virus. They had because of the virus scare they canceled, but the game's still going to be played, but it's going to be an empty arena. So professional sport over there is going to be played. I'm almost certain it's a soccer team um, that is going to be played in an empty arena. That's going to be fun to see. That'll be interesting because over there, right. like. The Europeans, they love their soccer. It's like that. That's their thing. That's like our thing is AEW. Their thing is soccer. You know, we go crazy for AEW. They go crazy for soccer. Like, right. I, like we go to AEW events and we like flares. They do that in soccer. No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> you're. Uh, you're <laughs> any, anywho. Uh, Rehu. Yeah. Um, we have eight total matches for. Uh, this card, which is pretty good. I think it's a good number of matches. I don't think they're going to add any more. We're not going to get any surprise matches. Eight's good. One pre-show, seven main card, which is, that's a lot in the main card, seven matches. So um, I can't wait. This is going to be a really good pay-per-view. Uh, they said they said multiple times, even last night in on the, the countdown, that you like, you don't want to miss this event. Like They're basically saying you need to watch this event. Like, this is going to be a you know quote-unquote revolutionary event pay-per-view so but i also read that cody said something about this being their wrestlemania really Mm -hmm. i don't know i feel like a lot of things are gonna happen here the predictions that like i have um i swear like it's it's either i 
I would say double or nothing or all outs like the WrestleMania. That's revolution. I don't know. Maybe because it's just so big. I, I don't know. I guess we'll see after on our review show how we feel about it. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we're going to get a lot of surprises. I think it's going to. This is a solid card. I mean, if it is. Sure. Card. I mean, yeah, it is a solid enough card for a type of WrestleMania type. I mean, you have. Yeah, I mean, we think about it. If we look at the card from the outside. You have the main. Uh, obviously the main match of Jericho and Moxley. That's like the, your big headliner. Then you have like the Bucks versus Kenny and Hangman. That's also a huge match. Cody versus MGF. This story's been building forever. So maybe it is this type. Maybe maybe this could be AEW's, rev- like this is going to be their, their WrestleMania. And it's, it's you know what I mean? This could be the pay-per-view every year that maybe even by next year, if this sport, if the brand does grow even more, maybe they think about putting it into that in a football stadium and have like a big or even a big giant arena. Like there's some uh, college stadiums out there that can hold at least was like 45 to 50,000. Maybe they think about something like that, because if you think about it, they've been on a lot. They've been doing these events on a lot of university campuses. And I imagine they're doing a lot of business behind the scenes with these universities that may have giant football stadiums, like a college stadium and say, look, you know, we'll come here, we'll do AEW, we'll get, you know, your, your we'll, we'll do it on your campus, we'll promote it and all that stuff. You know, maybe there's business behind the scenes that maybe even hold a bigger event at their college stadium in the future. So maybe if Revolution is their type of WrestleMania pay-per-view, we'll eventually get it in a bigger stadium to have but that WrestleMania-type feel. Is so solid that it could be like a WrestleMania. It, it is a really solid card. I mean, compare it to all the other pay-per-views, right? What do you think? Do you think that this is like... Well, the one thing that's interesting is there's no StarCast at this one. StarCast isn't at this one. Someone tweeted at them, and apparently they said they're not even going to be a double or nothing. So I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if they've broke partnership with StarCast or what. I don't know. So um, looking at the card from the outside, it is a pretty stacked card. Like It's it's really good. I think it's... uh, if it, if we put it in AEW terms, WrestleMania type esque, like it's it's stacked with all the top talent. Um, I don't know. It's it's going to be something we'll have to discuss in the review show for sure. So we'll definitely remember that. Um, as for the predictions, you guys know me and Tiff. We like to have a little competition on this show. I won 2019. Yeah, she won tw- 2019. Like <laughs> <My> crown. <laughs> Uh, so 2020, we're in a fresh start. So all four pay views, me, my, me, myself, and Tiff are going to do a prediction competition. So we're going to start fresh at this one. We have eight total matches. So we'll start off with the eight, the eight total matches. So we'll start off. Well, we we kind of began with it already. Um, that you know we talked about the Dark Order and all that stuff. So Dark Order is facing off against SCU uh, in the pre-show. Right. So Tiff. Um. If we can make a small prediction, like we kind of went based off it, of, let's just get it out of the way, yes or no. Is the exalted one going to appear in this match? Do you think, like, no. deep down, like, do you think he's going to appear at all? No. No? No. Are you with me on board that it'll be a tease, maybe? Like, a some sort of tease? No. No? You think it's just going to be a normal match and then. No, nope, I think it's going to be a normal match. Maybe we'll see something of. Um, What's the guy's name that uh that was doing all like the commercials as oh, we were? Oh, him. Like, I don't remember his yeah. name. Maybe we'll see something like that in the crowd. But no, I think that they're still going like he's near, he's near, he's near. So, um, mm-hmm. I don't think he's gonna come this show because it's in the buy-in. I mean, it could be at the same time. You know, it's like kind of like a twist, right? right. Because. You want people to watch the pay-per-view, right? So you could, I, I don't know, because I think it's too big to be on the buy-in. Right. And I feel like it'd be after, like like Wednesday, and Dynamite. You know, you know what's cool? As someone tweeted out, I saw this tweet and I was like, oh, okay, that's a pretty cool idea. Imagine when they do the big reveal of the, of the, uh, the Exalted One, they hand out Creeper Mash to everyone like around ringside and stuff. And there's like yeah. a cue to put it on. And when he makes his entrance, everyone has it on. Like, that would yeah. be insane. But, then I, but somebody's like, nobody's, they're not going to give this out for free. But it would be really cool. Like, I'm surprised they're not even selling it now. Because I would, I think it would sell out probably. Yeah, I'm shocked that the Creeper mask ain't on the shop. That's some, yeah. that's a, that's tweet worthy to Evil Uno. Like, I'm gonna well, go I want to join Dark Order. I want a Creeper mask. 
I'm gonna go steal John Silver and Alex Reynolds the next time I see them in an indie show. But yeah, like your Beaver Boys, they'll be our ringside for this match. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. So, <laughs> so it's Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky. It doesn't say anything about Christopher Daniels being at ringside. Which okay, so it's with Christopher Daniels. No, it does. Right. Okay, oh, yeah. so it'll be interesting to see him in this match because we've seen what's been going on with him over the last couple of weeks, and we saw in BT this week that. You know, they weren't really impressed with him this week because he has been he hasn't been around. We didn't even get a do ya. We didn't even get that. So he's you know, Kazarian's, you know, serious and and like, you know, he's focusing on this when we don't get it we don't get a do ya from Kazarian. So they're gonna be focused on this match to get some revenge in the dark order. Oh, this is a tough one. It, this is a pre show match and I'm having a tough time picking a winner here because they can either go the route of Dark Order winning and looking strong for the Exalted One's debut, or they can go the, the route of SU getting revenge in the Dark Order, and maybe there's like a big reveal of uh, Chris Rodanos joining the Dark Order even after the match. I don't know. They can go in a bunch of different ways here, but if I had to pick one, I'm actually going to stick on the first idea there. I'm going to pick the Dark Order over SCU uh, just to look strong. They, they're, they're spending a lot of time with the Dark Order. You can see it with all the... The pictures of AWs, even like their AW main Twitter account's been posting. So I think they're going to make them look strong. And somehow it's going to be like Christopher Daniels is going to cost them the match. And SCU will fall to the Dark Order in the pre show. Yeah, I'm 100% with you on this one. Um, Dark Order needs to look strong for the Exalted One. Like I said, I don't think the Exalted One is coming this weekend because, again, because she's already here. She knows. It's here. Um, yeah, I'm here. Hi. I'm the exalted oh, one. Hi, I'm the exalted <laughs> one. <laughs> so how, it's how they... I'm not in Chicago. I'm in New York. You can see I'm in my apartment right now. Is that how um, the exalted one's going to say hi? Hi, guys. I'm the exalted <laughs> one. <laughs> hi. Be fa- it's Fat Farrell, man. It's Fat Farrell. Where is Fat uh, Farrell? I don't know. Maybe he's the exalted one. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> we figured it out. He's not here. I don't know where he is. Um, but yeah, so I'm. I like I said. I for some reason because it's in the buy-in, he's not coming. I think he's gonna come Wednesday. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna come. Friday. I think I think it's gonna be that. Especially that we're seeing even on Twitter the numbers. Have you been noticing that on the All yeah. Elite Twitter? The numbers. Someone's been. Someone I guess figured it out somehow. They, it's like binary right. code. Yeah, it's join yeah. the dark order. And then there's like another one where it like it translates yeah. to yeah. March 1st at 3 a.m. and that's when Mark Matt Hardy's contract expires. Uh, this week on Dynamite, freaking Evil Uno said uh, obsolete, and I'm like, come on, guys. I don't know. I just like I said, I really believe because it's a buy in that yeah. they're not gonna do it. it but <laughs> them right? trolling, like it's either they're trolling or Matt Hardy a- actually is the exalted <laughs> one. All, all, if you haven't noticed, a lot of the wrestlers that are free agents, too, they've been trolling, too. A lot of them have been trolling. Like, they've been like, oh, what's next? And they like putting in AW. A lot of the, the free agents are doing that right now because you don't know. Killer Cross was doing it. Like, everybody. So, um, I think the thing is, though, Tiff, we know that they failed with the debut of the Dark Order. We know that, right? They're not going to want to fail us again. If they want to get yeah. this right and they want the Dark Order to have this like second boost here, like this is the second like this is the second strike with them. You can't make it underwhelming to the point where no one knows who the Exalted One is. They reveal it and no one knows who the hell it is. It's got to be someone big. It's got to be something someone that someone all knows, like a Lance Archer. I know they just announced it. Maybe if it is Lance Archer, again, everybody knows who Lance Archer is. Lance Archer is it's got to be him or like a Matt Hardy because you can't just be like okay we picked this guy from the indies that nobody like maybe five people out of the entire crowd knows and he's the exalted one because people are like that's twice now that you've deflated something with the the dark order like how are people supposed to be involved and invested or it's not anybody and it's somebody within the elite right see something like that see that's another big name it's got to be something like that like I think that I'd be mean, able to jump ahead or whatever like that. But I think Kenny's going to be the one that turns on Hangman Page. Everybody's expecting Hangman Page to walk away, right, and turn heel. No, I think somehow Kenny's going to turn on freaking Hangman Page, right? It's, it's going to blow everybody away because everybody's assuming Hangman. And it's going to be Kenny Omega. And then I feel like that's going to cost the tag team titles to, to the Young Bucks. Okay. So, okay. 
So it, it's it's just what I mean. There's a lot that we can think here, but I, I think uh, they because they said that they that the elite was going to fall. Hmm. Yes, that's right. We remember. Back. If you mm-hmm. remember, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I think it's somebody in the elite, unless it's Brandon Cutler. Oh, Cutler. Footage? No, I don't think so. But it'd be pretty funny. Exalted <laughs> footage. It'll be turned changed to exalted footage. <laughs> That'd be weird. That's so we weird to say. This. That hits a color. <laughs> exalted footage. <Ooh. laughs> uh, anywho, Rihu. Uh, so yeah, you have Dark Order. I have Dark Order. So we're tied off the bat. Uh, let's get into the next match here. Let's talk about uh, Jake Hagar, Dustin Rhodes. So okay. like we just, uh, two weeks ago, we got Wardlow's debut finally in AEW, a, a much anticipated debut. We have another much anticipated debut at Revolution, and that's Jake Hagar. First time in a wrestling ring wrestling in a long time. I think maybe since his WWE days. Um, this guy, tra- he transitioned to MMA. He was successful in Bellator. He was undefeated in his MMA career. So he's still in good shape. We know that. You know, being in good shape and being in ring shape are two different things. And they are, it, you can and you can ask any wrestler. It is a fact. They're, they're just two different kinds of being in shape. So we'll have to see how much Jake Hagar is in ring shape. Um, Dustin, who's obviously like, you know, he's in his quote unquote last ride, but somehow still has so much gas left in the tank. And he just, he just looks so good. Like it's like, this guy is like Benjamin Button. Like he's just getting younger. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. You might not see it in his face, but like, like you can see he's still in pretty good shape and he can still go in the ring. So obviously there's a lot of blood feud between these two stemming back from when uh uh the this goes back to like october ish or november when uh jake hagar smashed the limousine door on uh, dustin's arm breaking his arm and you know they, they, they've had this kind of like feud with each other ever since then because dustin went away and he healed and he healed that arm and finally got the cast off and you know, now he wants his revenge on Jake for taking him out that long. Like, he came into AW at that time for his last ride, but Jake stopped that. Jake halted his last ride in place and sent him out on the IR for months and months and months. So, you know, this is a revenge match. This is a grudge, a grudge feud in a grudge match. So, I think it's going to be really good. These guys are going to beat the hell out of each other. I think we're going to get a lot of... Uh, you know, a lot of moves out of Jake Hagar to the show that he still got it in the ring. And it's just going to be exciting to see finally Jake back in the ring and seeing him in his AEW debut. So as for a winner, I am actually picking Jake Hagar here. I don't think they're going to make him lose in his AEW debut. Um, I think Dustin's going to put up a really good contest against him, but I got to go with my gut in this one because it was pretty hard for me to pick. Um, but I'm going to stick with my gut and I think the inner circle is going to get at least one win <laughs> on revolution. It's going to come from Jake Hagar. <laughs> you know, I feel the same way that this was probably like a hard pick and I couldn't decide. I was flip flopping just, just like you. And again, the last match that I've actually seen Hagar in was when, uh, he was with number one husband. Yes. When he went against number one husband, Anthony Gangone. So I, th- I think you're right. It's a great grudge match. We finally get to see like two big guys like go at it. Dustin can freaking go. This has been proven in the last couple like months. It's crazy because we didn't expect that he was going to be wrestling a no. lot, right? At all. So I think, um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to agree with you on this one. I mean, I couldn't really decide. Um, but I think you're right. I think uh, the inner circle needs uh, a win, uh, which probably is going to go into like later when we decide some other stuff as well. Um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you on this one, mm. just to get the revenge, and you know it could be like a feud that could continue. Yeah, I'm go back I mean, to I wouldn't, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't mind like this feud to like continue on. Yeah, I'll go back to what you were just saying there. Um... We didn't expect Dustin to keep going like this because I remember back when we were talking about it last year before the Double or Nothing, before the first pay-per-view, when they finally got announced that it was Dustin Rhodes against Cody Rhodes, or Dustin Rhodes against Cody Rhodes, 
we thought, okay, this is going to be, you know, this is going to be a really brutal match, and you guys are going to beat the hell out of each other. And we thought, you know, maybe that's going to be Dustin's last match. This is kind of his last swan song, and then Dustin's going to transition into like a backstage guy. But ever since then, this guy has not stopped. So I think it's also, I think maybe there was an intention there. But again, it's it's the love for professional wrestlers. A lot of people, Dustin's age, man, it's really tough to let go of wrestling when you're so passionate about it. And Dustin comes from that family that's all about wrestling 24-7. So for him to leave wrestling in a ring and go into a transition to a backstage role, that's must be, that's going to be like hard as hell. We know eventually he will. I imagine he'll probably be like a coach whenever AEW gets like a training facility. He'll be a coach there to coach the younger talent that they find. So... Until then, though, if he wants to keep wrestling, go ahead. <laughs> it's still good. It keep going. Yeah, it's good. As as long as you're still good, why not do it, right? Yeah. So we'll talk about the other inner circle member, and that's uh, Sammy Guevara. He's facing off against Darby Allen. Right. Darby, your Darby. your boy Darby. Who <laughs> again? It's crazy. I bring this up all the time when. We first got introduced to Darby in AW. Tiff knew all about him, and I had like this much knowledge on Darby Allen. I had that no. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? I was so excited. I talk about this all the time. How excited I was! I was like, Kyle. And <laughs> so Tiff excited. reassured me so many times on so many different times that Darby Allen is going to be huge in AW, and he will eventually be over. And this by far is like the craziest prediction I've ever seen by anybody because it's true. Whenever Dar- Darby is probably one of the, the the top three pops in AEW currently right now. The, every yeah. time the guy makes his entry, the crowd goes nuts. We seen when he made his return last week, the crowd went absolutely like I, I don't think the crowd was ever that on fire since John Moxley made his debut. Like it was crazy, and then even. This week, man, they, the crowd was was hot this week in Kansas City. They are hilarious doing the whole Kansas City chant at Jericho during the wins. Like, they are great. But anyways, um, Darby Allen, man, this is great. So he, this is another one of those revenge grudge feuds. We know uh, about a month and a half ago it was, or almost two months, uh, there was a spot in the ring with Inner Circle and Darby where they, uh, where Sammy helped put the, drive the skateboard t- to into Darby's neck which uh, caused him to get, you know, kayfabe injured and go away for a while. Um, we saw a vignette of uh, Darby, you know, remembering that and planning to get his revenge on Sammy Guevara, you know, trolling his sign things. And the vignettes by Darby are all really cool. I really, really enjoy every vignette they do with Darby. Now that we have the AW production team doing it, like Darby's vignettes are gonna send are gonna transcend this guy into another level. Like he is going to be, and he's so young too. So he this guy's gonna be one of the biggest stars in AEW, guarantee going into the future. So we have him facing Sammy Guevara here in this match. Um, man, if you think about it, you take the feuds aside, you take the characters aside. These two in the ring together, holy crap! This is gonna be a very a. It's gonna be a very high flying match. It's gonna be very hot, fast paced because both these guys are almost similar in the ring. So, putting all that aside and thinking about the match itself, this is gonna be one of one of the matches of the night. I think this is gonna be a very yeah, very good match. I was say, I think this is gonna steal the pay per view. This match, I really do. Yeah, it's gonna be very good in terms of wrestling in the ring. The product that we're gonna get is gonna be great. On top of the storytelling we're gonna get with this this match. Um, I can't wait to watch it. It's going to be great. It's going to be great to see Darby go at it with Sammy G. Um, unfortunately for Sammy Guevara, I think he's going to be taking the L here, and we're going to get Darby to win in his return back into an AEW ring and uh, keeping that momentum high with uh, Darby Allen. Mm, okay, so this is where we finally disagree. Oh, I, how I, could I, you? I, I Look, I love Darby. Again, I've been a fan of since the beginning before he joined AEW. He's amazing in the ring, okay? And I really thought about this. Again, every pick that I picked was very difficult. It's, uh, you know, and and we go through this every pay-per-view that we talk about with these predictions, right? And this is what makes it great is that it makes it very difficult to pick who's going to win. And that's what I love about AEW. It's finally something new, something fresh, and I can't figure out who the hell's going to win. I played with this all day today of who was going to win. Um... Sammy has not been picking up a lot of wins. Sammy needs this. The inner circle needs to be strong because okay. I just feel like this is what's going to build into our main event or whatever. 
but Sam, I think Sammy needs this win, um, and I think Darby will be okay if he if he takes the L here. Okay. Do you think the Proud and Powerful will get involved in some way in this match? Possibly. Or do you think they get involved in the main event? Mm, you know, there's so many thoughts. What I think of with the main event, there's there's a lot of things that can happen in the main event, which we'll get to when we get to that. Um, there's the possibility because of how this match went this week on Dynamite with Proud and Powerful and Darby coming right. in and you know hitting with the the ball sack and everything. <laughs> so um, the New York way. Uh, <laughs> Like anyway, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> who are you? Um, but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Sammy on this one. Oh, so I'm going with Darby. You going with Sammy? Interesting. Oh. Okay, okay. I feel you, dog. I feel you, dog. Okay. We gotta have some sort of disagreements here. Yeah, we do. We do. Um, so let's move on here. Uh, let's talk about. Oh, this. This is gonna be. This is probably gonna be the most entertaining match of the entire card. <laughs> Because, again, we're getting another first here and another debut in sorts. We're getting the in-ring technically debut in his first singles match in AEW. Orange Cassidy, freshly squeezed himself, is going to be facing Pac, of all people, in his first singles match. Are you kidding me? And <laughs> I tweeted this during Dynamite on uh, last night. And I'm like... Dear at Tony Khan and AW Wrestling, this is before they announced it. I'm like, could you please do all the fans a favor here and please, for the love of God, give us <laughs> Pac versus Orange Cassidy at W. <laughs> oh God, there he is. At AW. At a Sorry, shout outs to, uh, I forgot her name. Well, oh, we, no. We, we got these dolls. I got the Kenny one over here. Um, at a at a, a full gear, uh, this girl make hand makes these things. These are so cool. So he, she uh, Tiffany bought an Orange Cassidy one, and I believe Trent Beretta. Trent. Yeah, and then I bought a Kenny Omega one. So these are so cool. So shout outs to her. I forgot your name. Sorry. Um. Anywho. Uh, yeah. So I tweeted that we want. I, I'm like, please, dear Tony Khan, but just give us Pac versus Orange Cassidy at Revolution. Sure enough, like like 15 minutes later, they announced it on Dynamite. Not saying I had any influence on that. I knew they were probably going to do that anyways, but <laughs> I was just so happy when they announced it. I'm like, oh my god, we're finally going to get Orange Cassidy in a singles match. And they said on was it Trent and Chuck on uh, on Dynamite? They're like, uh, he he probably will try. Or he actually maybe, I think it was Orange Cassidy's like, or maybe he's not going to try. <laughs> so I think it's going to be very entertaining. Uh, I think it's going to be a good match. It's going to be fine. I hope we do get to see him try a little bit because I think we need, this needs to be the time where he they, he kind of finally shows the naysayers to Orange Cassidy that he, this guy can actually do stuff and he can actually wrestle like you've been saying like all this time you've seen him actually wrestle so i think we need to start showing the world in the aw world he can wrestle right. by the way her name is flighty but lass <laughs> on twitter it's that's flighty her. and powerful that that that's the girl who makes all these lovely dolls and pins yeah. shout outs to you hopefully we'll, oh. we're gonna we're definitely her gonna name. tag her um yeah but as for this match, I can't, I can't wait to watch this match just because it's going to be so entertaining. And I hope we get a really good match out of it. Um, oh, God. This is tough. This is so tough because there's Not two ways they can go. They, Tiff, they can go both ways here. They can go and give Orange Cassidy his first win nope. in AEW. Or they can just ruin that. And, it, you know, if they give Pac the win here, it's just it, Orange Cassidy taking an L really doesn't matter. Um Oh God, I don't know. But right. Pac, Pac, Pac can't take another L. It's like twice in one week. So I'm gonna take uh, Pac over Orange Cassidy. Sadly enough, because I don't want to see it happen. But it's probably gonna happen. No. no, I'm going with my boy, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy, oh. because again, like I said, I've been following him in the indie scenes for a very long time there was a reason why he was the iwtv champion there was a reason for it he was traveling all over with that belt and he was continuing to freaking hold that championship belt okay i am so excited for you guys to see what he can really freaking do you're seeing freaking the do. joke <laughs> 
All right, you've seen the little kicks and all that stuff, and I know I'm not going to be able to handle this match. In reality, you think, okay, he's going to get killed, right? He's going to get killed. No, it's going to be some sort of, like, roll-up pin that Pac's going to be like, what the hell? What yeah. just happened? That's what's going to ha- You're going to see, well, again, why he was the IWTV champ for a while. So okay. I'm going with okay. it, Orange Cassidy, my husband. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Okay, so there's another difference yeah. pick here. All right. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> This guy. All right. Um, we'll move on. Move on here. And next <laughs> match we're going to talk about. Ooh, this is going to be tough. How about we talk about the women's championship match, Nyla Rose Let's, versus Chris wait, Statlander. Before you say anything, okay, because I swore I saw this floating around. I saw that Chris Statlander has the flu. Did oh, you no. see that? Oh, wait, yeah, the I've flu- seen. There was a tweet. It was so uh, I, Bar Wrestling it was one, tweeted out. Yeah, Bar Wrestling. So I was talking about this last night. I was like, maybe that's why we saw the four way this week. I don't I don't know, just in case if she's not well to be wrestling in the ring. So do you want to make a prediction that if that is true? Okay, so I'll make like, two predictions. Because like, if Statlander can't go, they would throw Sheeta in there as her replacement. Sheeta or it could be like the or maybe like because, you know, they were teasing last week with Big Swole. But I'm just what because I was thinking that. Well, they, they said on Dynamite that the winner of that fail four way will face the winner of the championship match. Yeah, I guess that's true, too. They can go either way. It's going to. Uh, I know. I just like threw you. But yeah, I saw that. With you know what? How about match. we just go with if it's Statlander and then if she doesn't, we just this match just doesn't count towards our okay. picks. So that's fine. Uh, let's just go into this predicting it as if Statlander is going to be there. Um, this is interesting too that we bring this up because during when they did that whole confrontation thing last week, I thought that Statlander and Big Swole were going to get a number one contenders match this week on Dynamite, and that was going to decide. But they just kind of went ahead with it and said, "Okay, no, Statlander is going to face Nyla Rose for the championship." And then on right. Dynamite this week, they had that fatal four way um, with Swole, Sheeta. Uh, Yuka and uh, Swole, no. Sheeta. Who am I missing? Who is on Dynamite this week? How am I, how am I drawing a blank here? Girl, Sh- Shayna. Oh, Shana. 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 Yeah. Shana. 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 Whatever. Shana. The her. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Re-who. Dragon Ball wife. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I thought. We got that, and they said during that that match that the winner of that match was going to face the will will get a championship match against the winner of Saturday's match. So right. she is technically the number one contender again, which is great because she should have been the champion to begin with. Um, but if Sadler just kind of automatically got the championship, maybe I don't know what went into that decision. I don't remember the rankings at that point, but whatever it is, what it is, we're getting Chris Statlander, who is a a now a fan favorite in AW and rightfully so she's just come out of left field with her in AW and I didn't know anything about her going in uh, I know Tiff Queen of the Indies knew about her going in obviously um, no but I, her gimmick is hilarious I love her bits on BT um, this is going to be a good match I think this is probably going to be Nyla Rose's toughest contest although Riho brings her brings Nyla Rose to really good matches and we've seen that, like even the championship match three weeks ago, that was one of the best women's matches we got in AEW. Um, I think in terms of size and power, this is probably going to be uh, Nyla Rose's toughest match yet. Um, I think it's going to be a good match. Both these girls have the capability of producing a good match. It's going to be interesting, but I do I don't think they're using Nyla as a transitional champion. Somehow, some way, she's going to get the win over Chris Statlander. And I'm picking Nyla Rose to defend the AEW Women's Championship. Do you think there's the possibility of Big Swole jumping into this as well? As a three-way? Mm, maybe like an interference because, again, like I said, I go back to... No. but I'm just going back to how they built it last week on Dynamite, Right. That she came out. I know. I think if Swole, I, it was weird. I, mean, I know that. But I, if Swole was going to do something in this match, I think she would have won the four-way on Wednesday. Excuse me. Uh, last night. <laughs> the burp can out of nowhere. Yeah. It's okay. Um, 
it's just weird, right? Because like how like some of the story was going, and I feel like it's not getting like played out a little bit. So, but Big Swole's like really great in the ring as well. She's another big contender as well that would be just as great. Um, but yeah, I'm going with you on this. I don't think she's going to be a transition, even though there was so much heat on social media, which I hate. Um, but no, because I really believe that she was originally supposed to have the belt originally yeah. on the first dynamite. And I think because of all the backlash that happened, they put the belt on real. And you, you can't, you, you can't run like what they've done with Nia. nile has been great as a, as a champion. I love her promos. Her promo work is really good. And, she she comes she does like some wrestlers can go out there and portray themselves as a beast like like they're just this ultimate like huge beast and just you know dominant figure she actually makes it believable so i think that she does a good job with that and that plays into a factor of you know we can't just make her a transitional champion she needs to hold on to that belt a little bit longer maybe even by double or nothing they they finally get it off for or all out um I She's just more of a believable champ, yeah, right? And three weeks isn't enough. We talked about for a while that we didn't really feel that Rio's good, but we didn't really believe her as a women's champ. She needs to go. She needs to run through a couple more people too. Yeah, you can't just make it, three weeks isn't enough for Nyla Rose. So yeah, Nyla Rose both going with her. Good picks there, and uh, she'll retain and go on to face who Karu Shida. For the women's championship eventually and whenever that will be it looks like it'll probably be on an episode of dynamite so we'll see when that may be um next match next match the what should we talk match? about next yes the tag team match yeah. this is going to be awesome so we have the aw world tag team championship match between the young bucks and kenny and hangman and Oh boy, like this match is just going to be, it's going to be epic, it's going to be chaotic, there's there's history behind these guys, there's everything, and there's a little bit of cowboy shit involved in this match, because <laughs> we've seen Hangman Page for months now, and the deception between him and the Elite, and him feeling like he's not part of the group anymore, and he just, you know, he's confused about where his place is in the Elite, and you know, he keep he he's kind of like on the fence of you know sticking with the group or being his lone ranger self and leaving and being handmaid Adam Page. And this feud has been pretty good. It's gotten intense over the last couple of weeks. From one thing that sticks out in my mind is the the line drop they had this week on Dynamite, where Hangman uh, was a Nick or Matt dropped the line of. You know, you were nothing. You, we, we, we found you when you were some jobber in Ring of Honor. And I was like, oh, <laughs> damn. Yeah. And they were just going at it like crazy in that JR interview. And that would, that really picked up that, that feud. And you think about it, like, there's a lot of history that this, this feud is built up around the history of the, of the elite and, and what's going on with Hangman Page and all his drinking problems. And, and going into this match, I thought for sure Kenny and Hangman would be, would be at least, you know, some sort of the same page. And they're not. Like, as far as the last interview went, Kenny said that they're not on the same page. Like, he knows they're, 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 they're not going to be on the same page going to this match. And that's going to be interesting to see going into that match on Saturday. And, man, it's just ever... And you, you, again, this is another match where if you put the feud aside, you put the story aside... This match is going to be an epic match. The people that are in this ring are, you know, pun intended, elite. Uh, Young Bucks, one of the best tag teams in the world. And you have Kenny Omega, one of the best wrestlers in the world, teaming up with Hangman Page, who is a really good wrestler and one of the best out there. So this is sure to be one of the best tag team matches I think AW is ever going to produce. I think it's going to be very, very, very epic. Um, and, I, and I can't wait for it. I cannot wait for this match can't just but if i had to pick a winner oh boy like i don't know where to go in this match because like we can also bring in the dark order stuff like maybe this is where one of them reveals himself as the leader of the dark order like what if the dark order come in at the end of the match and start attacking everybody and then the old kenny reveals himself as the exalted one or hangman says you know I'm the exalted one. That's why I, where, where I've been. Or, you know, maybe Brandon Cutler does something because he's going to be there. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see. But for me, I'm going to go with my gut, though. 
you know what? I think my gut, I've been trusting my gut a lot. I think it's been helping out maybe. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with there's, I, I don't think neither Hangman or Kenny is the exalted one anymore. I'm throwing that theory out the window. I know I've said it before on the podcast. Taking that theory out, I think it's just going to be plain and simple match. Ah, this sucks. This is going to be so like cheesy, but I think they're all going to make up. I think Hangman's just finally going to say he's sorry and they're all going to hug at the end. And um, Your winners and new tag team champions, the Young Bucks. Yeah, I'm with you on this one. This is going to the Young Bucks. I don't know. I still kind of like the thought of, again, this is this is what makes it hard because it could go either way, right? Yeah. You Like a lot of people are expecting Hangman to turn like heel, right? And it would be interesting to see him heal, him walking away from the elite completely, right? That's what like everybody's like believing that's going to happen. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think I think that's what we're thinking. I think there's a lot of things that you could play here. Can you imagine like private party came out or something? And because they're looking for like Isaiah's looking for his 12 bucks back. <laughs> from hangman page like there's a lot you could sit here this is what i like is that we're sitting here we're thinking about all this right i still like the fact that kenny's gonna be the one that turns because i i feel like kenny's a great heel i like him more as a heel than i do as a face but the same thing too i think about what brad had said to me he's like the elite was better when they were all a freaking heel not that i'm saying that they're all gonna turn heel but i think it's really stuff that we're i think we're gonna be blown out of the park i don't think it's gonna be stuff that we're thinking is gonna happen so but i definitely agree with you i feel like this was a transition team because it was kind of that wow factor to go give it to page and and kenny omega as a tag team because it's just like weird doesn't make sense but you don't want to put keep them in the main title picture you had all these yeah. storylines talking and Kenny Omega, you, you had a whole bunch of storylines, so we're keeping them out of the AEW title. But the Young Bucks, but think about it, the Young Bucks has so many great um, tag team matches with all, you know, all the yeah. different tag teams. I just wish that we would get more built up of all the tag teams, right? Like, I would love the belts to be on Private Party. I would love the belts to be on Best Friends. I would love the belts to be on Jurassic Express. I wish we would have had this before it went on to Hangman and Kenny. And I know I've talked yeah. about this on the podcast previously. So, but I think this was a transition. I think I think it's going to go to the Young Bucks. It's not that I really want it to be like this. I love the Young Bucks. But I just feel like it's their company. They should be far away from the belts right now. Yeah. Oh, it's still too soon. But... I think this is what's going to happen on the storyline that we've been getting. Uh, yeah. So it should be an interesting match. It's going to be interesting to see the end of it and the, predic- and the predicament and the story, how it uh, continues or ends. Um, I could even think about seeing maybe like there's some sort of, disc- I know they don't like doing disqualifications, but somehow Kenny and Hangman retain and maybe the Young Bucks don't want to win the titles until it's like a big moment for them. So who knows? We'll have to see and wait on Saturday. On Saturday. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about MJF and Cody. Yes. This the, was a hot another thing. grudge. A lot of grudge feuds on this this uh, this card. But this one's the, the top one, the main one out of all of them. This story has been amazing and epic. It's got like Gargano Champa levels on this. Like it's just, just this story goes so far back, and they 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 made note of it. If you guys watched Countdown to Revolution after Dynamite last night, if not, go back and watch it where they recap the story between MGF and Cody. It's so good. It gives you more insight to it. It gives you a lot more details, and it's just. Oof. Oh. Wait. And you know, can we bring? I was just up gonna bring that up. I- yeah. Bring it up. <laughs> so, if you guys seen Dynamite this week, the promo for Cody and MJF. <clears throat> Coincidentally, featured a theme song. The song, uh, I'm wearing the t shirt. <laughs> Dead to Me by These Wolves. Yes, the band that does the official theme song of this podcast since day one, since last January. We've had, or no, a little bit after that, actually, because we had a well, like a generic theme after that. But they, the Darren and these wolves, we we came in contact with each other over Twitter DMs, and 
uh, we like their music and we love Dead to Me. And we thought about picking that for our theme song. They let us use it. They actually prov- uh, use let us use other songs that they provide uh, for a lot of podcasts on this network. Um, it to hear it during that Cody promo last night was so amazing. I freaked out. I was going nuts. I was going ape shit. I couldn't couldn't believe that Darren and these wolves got on TV. Uh, Darren, congratulations to you guys. That was an awesome moment, and we. Couldn't thank you enough for letting us use that theme song and can't be happy enough for you guys to get that spot on TV and be and be a theme song for a few that's going to go into the one of the biggest matches on Saturday. That's even better. It's so crazy. I put a tweet out. I was like, the next time I see Darren, we are popping a little bit of the bubbly because the I bubbly. do see Darren more than Kyle does because Darren doesn't live too far from me so he's in jersey and i'm in new york so and then i run into him at a lot of the indie shows because he works for gopro uh, wrestling as well so um i'm gonna see him soon i'll see him at the AEW dynamite in new jersey but there's possibility that i'll see him before but what an honor like how cool is that we got to meet him and his girl um at full gear I mean, it's crazy, right? It's crazy. The podcast. And, oh. mm-hmm. It was awesome. It was, it was such a cool moment last night. Um, and people like to as like, as they recognized it right away, it was, it was sweet. It was, it was, it was a bittersweet. Um, I was going to say, got, yes, the feud. the feud, <laughs> the match is up. This is going to be so good. Like we got the, all three. This is basically, this is going to, all three stipulations have been met. Cody hasn't touched MJF. Uh, he's come close. He's, he's teased him a lot. Um, yeah, <laughs> we had the 10 lashes, the kinky lashes on TV. Uh, and then we had the steel cage match between Wardlow and Cody, which was, I love the steel cage that AW provides. And that was such a good match with an epic finish. So all three stipulations have been met. Cody going into this match against MJF. This is sure to be one of the matches of the night for sure. Um, I cannot wait for these two to go at it. Um, it's sure to be an aggressive match, a very intense match. We're going to be able to feel what they're feeling through the TV. I will guarantee tea that. I'll give you a JR guarantee tea there. Um, I can't wait. This is going to be one of my most look forward to matches of the night. Uh, but I had to pick a winner. Oh, God. So this was very tough for me. Very, very tough for me. Because um, this is another one where I could see it going two ways. I'm going to go on the fence that I'm picking MJF here and I'll, and I'll give my reason why Cody's looked way too damn strong in this entire feud, like way too strong. Each stipulation came off so easy. Nothing looks looked hard enough for Cody. I can't see them just Cody walking all over this feud being the strongest look, the strongest out of all of it. And then walking into revolution and just beating MJF. Something tells me inside that MJF is somehow going to win. Whether Wardlow gets involved, we know he's going to be at ringside. Whether MJF just beats Cody clean, I think it's a good idea. I think you 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 make MJF, they know he's going to be their number one heel in the entire company. This guy is money. He sells. He's the perfect heel. He's the next generation big heel. I think in, this is a perfect time for him to be looked strong and I th- I just this gut is telling me that MJF is somehow gonna pull off the victory. Gonna go with my gut again here, and I'm picking MJF over Cody Rhodes at Revolution. What do you think, Tiff? Damn it! You just like screwed me all up. You really did because originally, like, I was sitting with gut, and I'm like, Cody's gonna win this because of all the shit he freaking went through, right? But you just saying all that has made me like want it. Oh, Kyle. <laughs> I'm sorry, just go with your gut then. Pick Cody. No, because after you say that, that changed my damn gut. That really did. Because you're right. And then it's like, right, Cody can't challenge for the belt anymore, right? He can't. Well, so, as far as we know. Like, no, because they said, like, right, that was the stipulation. He had lost, right? And he's not allowed to challenge for the belt anymore, right? But what about this if mjf picks up this win or whatever like that that he could be like oh okay i have the ring going on you know i'll beat your your coat your precious cody rhodes and who does it say that he doesn't go into the title shot yeah now you got me freaking thinking now i have to go with you with this and go for mjf because just just or you pick cody and just help me get my first pay-per-view win 
No, because like you just changed my mind and like. Damn it, Kyle! Like I legit was like picking. Sorry, I, I speak I, logic. Last, like, <laughs> oh my god! Like I was legit as we were streaming. Like that was the last one I couldn't decide on, and you just I was good. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go with Cody because it's gonna be the big win, and it's gonna be like, oh no, no, after Ooh. everything you. Were <laughs> How about this? I'm going with Kyle. <laughs> okay. I'm going with Kyle on this one. Okay, fair enough. So I'm picking MJF. Okay. Tiff picks MJF. Yeah. We'll see what happens Saturday. It's, it's going to be a match we're going to keep our close eye on. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be epic. Every match looks epic. <laughs> so let's get into the main event. And just for you, Tiff, I'm going to let you go first on this one. So the main event, we have John Moxley. Just in case I change your answer again. We have John Moxley versus Chris Jericho for the AEW World Championship. This feud writes itself. We've seen everything that's happened in this feud from back when uh, they teased Moxley joining the inner circle. He kind of did for a good 30 seconds and then he turned on Chris Jericho. Uh, the whole eye things have been a big factor here. Both, I wonder if Moxley's going to have that eye patch on Saturday. I wonder if that's going to be for the final day where he takes it off. You know what I mean? Maybe he'll take it off during the match. Like, yeah. I see you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Hi. Hey. <laughs> Um, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see, but this mat, this feud is so awesome. It's it's the big fight. You know what I mean? It's like when you're watching the UFC and there's like a big there's a big fight in the main event. You know, like all the other matches are just you know normal good matches, and then the big fight is like way up here. This is what this is like. Every match on this card is good. Then when you get to this mat, this is the big the big fight. This is what everyone's gonna look forward to. This is your main event, Chris Jericho. John Moxley, these guys coming from the WWE not even like two, three years ago, fighting in them, like two big WWE stars fighting each other in an AEW ring with, you know, it's going to be a, a completely different to what we've seen in WWE. This is going to be amazing. This match is actually going to be very, very good. I'm going to look forward to the crowd singing Jericho's theme song, Moxley's pop, the whole match itself. This is going to be an epic match. We saw at the last paper of Full Gear Tiff how epic John Moxley's last match was with Kenny in that that unsanctioned match. Like that was incredible. So John Moxley is the top star, and it, Jr. mentioned it this week. He says that he had his, he has rattlesnake mentalities. Like this guy, Jr. from the man himself is comparing this guy to Stone Cold Steve Austin, and he is. John Moxley is AEW Stone Cold Steve Austin, and. If they keep building him like that, he'll be in that same category in the future and be one of the legends that Stone Cold, you know, I don't give a crap about anybody. I toot my own horn. Uh, he's just the ultimate badass. And he is. John Moxley is the ultimate badass right now in AEW. So I can't wait for this match. But Tiffany, I want to let you go first on the prediction here. Okay. So, like, I really thought about this, okay? There's a lot of possibilities that can go here, right? Okay. Jericho is great jericho's been the the a, a really good pick for the championship right um i feel like i'm gonna make you think on this one all right because this is actually something that i've been thinking about for a little bit i do believe moxley's gonna take the belt right but how interesting would this prediction be all right is that somehow lance archer jumps into this feud and Moxley wins by disqualification and keeps the belt on Jericho because of what, the feud that we've seen in New Japan. But okay. again, not everybody watches New Japan, so not everybody's going to like understand what I'm talking about. But they, there was a feud between the both of them. And, and, and it was really, really good feud. Um, so, but I don't know. Like, I think it's time they to They go either way with that, too, because if Moxley yeah. wins the championship... They can right. Archer can just skyrocket straight up, and and he, you know, they he somehow finds his way into the title opportunity. Maybe he just runs over people week after week, and somehow becomes the number one contender by double or nothing, and he faces Moxley at double or nothing for the championship. Or it's just that the inner circle interferes during it, right? Moxley like, uh, like I think the only, the I think the only like, way inner circle interferes is the referee is knocked out and he can't see it. Right. Right, but that's maybe that could be a play too. That Archer comes in or somehow helps or <laughs> attacks I don't know. them both. He's like saving, like, and then he turns or, to Moxley and attacks Moxley, <laughs> and yeah, he just doesn't then, care, like, right? Moxley yeah. Wins, Moxley wins, and then Archer comes out, 
and like face to face with Moxley, expecting a challenge for the belt, like for later. I don't know. There's like a lot of possibilities here, but I'm still going with my gut. I think Moxley's taking the belt off Jericho. It's it's time. Moxley's a freaking beast, right? He hasn't lost anything. Uh, I think we're going to continue the correct way how like Asuka should have been built, like how she was in NXT, undefeated. She should have came to like WWE, like they should have, she's just, the belt should have just never came off of her, right? Asuka was a beast and they've just build, been building Moxley like this. So it's, it's, it's time to take it off Jericho. It's, it's just time. Okay. So it's a good thing I let you go first because my pick's the opposite. I'm picking Chris Jericho, and I'm going to base it off, well, actually, what you just said. I like that idea of Lance Archer somehow getting involved. We know he's officially signed. They could have waited mm-hmm. and just made this a surprise, but they made uh, a point of announcing he signed before Revolution. So they could have waited until all the Revolution hype was done and then announce it, but they made it They made it a, a point to announce this, Tiff. Mm-hmm. No, I know. I like so... It. I like your idea of him getting involved. So while you were talking, I kind of played it out in my mind. <laughs> I think while the referee is knocked out, the inner circle comes in, they attack, they're beating on Moxley, and Lance Archer makes his big debut. He comes down and just starts ripping the inner circle apart, and everyone's like, oh, crap, he's on Moxley's side. You know, these guys were feuding in New Japan. Now they're friends. He attacks everyone. He lays out Chris Jericho, and then he holds his arm out, and it helps Moxley up. The same time he does that, you know his finisher when he pulls you in and gives you that that high knee. He's, he does that to John Moxley, lays them both out. So he's on nobody's side. He leaves. The referee finally wakes up. Who then crawls over to Jericho to get the cheap win? Or sorry, calls over to Moxley to get the cheap win. Cover one, two, three. That's how Lance Archer screws John Moxley out of the championship. He starts that feud. Can you imagine a blood feud between those two go at, like going at it? That, that match doesn't need a championship, those two going at it. And it's a good way to transition uh, Ar- Archer into AW without getting a championship match right away. Um, right. Jericho can hang on to the belt. The guy has money. Like, you can't. It's so hard to take Jericho off the belt because what is Chris Jericho at this time, this point in time in AW without the championship? Like,. Yeah. It's it's really tough to build him up and keep, make him keep going. I think you you can't take the belt off Jericho until he's ready to step aside for a bit and and you know disappear for months on end and and go away until it's time for him to come back. Bye. Jericho is just money. He's like what Brock Lesnar. It's like what WWE sees in Brock Lesnar. Money. AW sees it with Jericho. He is money. Like he he is a rightful champion. I th- yeah. I don't think we're gonna see the belt off Jericho until double or nothing or maybe all out. So that's why I'm picking Chris Jericho with the cheap win. If it's not the Archer route, I'm still, my gut is still saying Chris Jericho is somehow going to come out on top. Ugh, and it sucks because like, I agree yeah, with you. That, like, like Moxley kind of like wins by like disqualification. So even though he wins the mal- match. I don't think they'll do that in like, AW. They can't. It. No, you don't. The fans will be way too pissed off at something like that because the fan they they listen to the fans and the fans were always mad about when WWE does that at a pay per view like they always were were pissed when WWE did that I don't think they would do that, um, right. I just think because again you say it like that because it's, it's something we're used to because WWE would do it all the, the damn time and it was it's I hate it I think <laughs> oh, I really do think Chris <laughs> Jericho is going to win this match but it sucks because I want to see John Moxley with the title. I Go really want to see Moxley okay. with that championship. I, he's he is the perfect time for him as well. It's it's this was a very very tough pick, but I'm going to pick Chris Jericho, and okay. I think he's going to retain. You got John Moxley, winning the championship. Either way, amazing and should close out a successful pay per view for a E Dub, and. Uh, yeah. So let's let me just going to quickly go over the picks here. We got uh, me and you picking Dark Order. Me and you picking Jake Hagar over Dustin Rhodes. Uh, I'm picking Darby Allen over Sammy G. You're picking Sammy G over Darby Allen. I'm picking Pac over Orange Cassidy. You're picking Orange Cassidy over Pac. We're both picking Nyla Rose. We both picked the Young Bucks. We both pick MJF. And I'm picking Chris Jericho over Moxley. You're picking Moxley over Chris Jericho. So we'll see who wins. That's good. If we have enough, to, to, so one of us is going to win. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens on Saturday. 
in our predictions who gets the first pay-per-view win of the year. But until then, guys, make sure you are following the podcast on social media. You are liking us on Facebook at All Elite Podcast. You are liking us on Instagram at All Elite Pod. And make sure the most important social media out of them all, and that is the Twitter. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at All Elite Pod is where we post each and every single update with the podcast and AEW. Um, if you want to take us on the go, uh, well, A, thank you for listening to us on YouTube and watching on YouTube. And make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and the like button down below. But if you want to take us on the go, we are available on a lot of different devices, guys, on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Spotify, Google and Apple Podcasts, Player FM, Overcast, and more. We are located, just make sure you are searching the No Holds Bar Network and you will find the All Elite Podcast and other podcasts available on the No Holds Bar Network as well. Speaking of the No Holds Bar Network, guys, the official merchandise store is open for the No Holds Bar Network. Make sure you're going to noholdsbarnetwork.secure-decoration.com. Link is located down in the description for you to uh, to click and go check out the awesome merchandise on there. Where you can find uh, such merchandise like the uh, These Wolves T on there, guys, and everything on that website. Most importantly of all is donated to Culture City, which is a nonprofit dedica- uh, dedicated to fighting for the inclusion and acceptance of all individuals regardless of their unique abilities, and they are partnered up with AEW as well. And like we gave him a shout-out earlier in the show, guys, shout-outs again to Darren and These Wolves with their song Dead to Me that made its AEW Dynamite debut this week. And they provide the theme song, uh, de- de- they, provide the song. they provide the song Dead to Me as our theme song. God, that was hard to get out. And uh, shout outs to you, Darren, each and every single week for letting us have that. Uh, you have no idea what it means to us. So thank you again to Darren and these wolves. So, Tiff, it's going to be a good pay per view on Saturday. It's going to be great. Let's go. Cannot wait, guys. Let us know what you guys have for crazy predictions down below in the comments. Tweet at, or tweet at me at Real Kyle Masters. Tweet at Tiff at Love to Dream 82 or just tweet at the podcast at All Elite Pod. Let us know what you guys thought of this podcast. Let us know what you guys think of your predictions. Uh, but other than that, that's probably going to wrap it up here for the All Elite Podcast, guys, right here on the No Holds Bar Network, your source for all North American. <laughs> <laughs> Tiff, man, you and your like horns are getting me screwed up here. Uh, your source of wrestling podcast content and more. I was about to un- I was about to plug my my other sports podcasts I do. Um, I'm your host as always, the self proclaimed greatest host at Real Kyle Masters. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co. She's the executive vice president of Giggles, the heartbreak chick, the queen of the Indies, and possibly the exalted one, Tiffany. And you can follow her on Twitter at Love to Dream eighty two. That's gonna wrap it up, guys. We're out of here. We'll see you guys next week for the review of AEW Revolution. Take it easy. I don't know how the story-